and it is my absolute pleasure this morning to be sharing the podium with our own Assistant Minister, Reverend Anne Shand, who will bring in this morning's message. We know we can look forward to an inspirational and uplifting and enlightening message from Reverend Anne. Reverend Anne, please, welcome. Good morning, everyone. May I add my own words of welcome on this wonderful sunny morning. And also all those are joining us on the world web. And my regards to the rest of my countrymen and those in Cuba and Haiti and know that the best conditions will be created for them to be the best that they can be. And the United States also, even in this time. Mm. Ah. We have chosen this month of October to contemplate peace, an attribute of spirit, which means peace is part of our inherent nature, but require the conditions to reveal its properties in our day-to-day -day experiences. We live in a busy world, constantly bombarded by sounds, events, reactions, inundated by internal and external stimuli that we react to in some shape or form. Therefore, how we circumvent and circumnavigate through all this to seek and retain some measure of peace and quiet in order to rest, renew, revitalize, resurrect, regenerate, refocus, restore, is part of our growth and evolution as enlightened beings on this plane of existence. What practices do we engage in to assist us in developing a consciousness of peace? That is my title this morning, Developing a Consciousness of Peace. Ms. Hopkins, in her book, Scientific Christian Mental Practice, states rather succinctly, and I quote, your practice must tell the world that your genius, what your genius can do. Your practice must tell the world what your genius can do. Everything you do must have its process of demonstration, which, by being recorded in plain sight, can show others how to do likewise." End of quote. If I were in her class, my hand would go up right away. But Ms. Hopkins, how do I do that? When on a daily basis, the scientists say in excess of 60,000 separate thoughts go through my mind. In fact, my brain generates more electrical impulses in a single day than all the world's telephones put together. In the face of all things that distract, delay, undermine, destroy, and disintegrate, that precious state of mind known as peace, how do I demonstrate my genius through a consciousness of peace? She gives a solution later on in a chapter called Fearlessness. And it says, holding steadfastly to some, one principle, some one idea, they have gone through many seeming trials with victory, end of quote. Friends, it is not enough to say if you are in business, when I've completed my work or earned in excess off, I will have some peace. Or as a parent with financial obligations, when I am free, I will know peace. Or if you have eight children, when they have their own homes, I will have peace. Or when I have a loving companion, I will have peace. <laughs> You're not supposed to have any doubt. <laughs> <laughs> Carter Whitehead states, and I quote, inner peace is never born of outside conditions. It comes when we have harmonized our thoughts, feelings, and actions with the inmost core of our being, the oversoul, the divine within. Until we have begun to do this, there can be no peace, because there is war in the inner world, our reason fights our desire, and our actions are the poor, ragged children of this conflict." End of quote. P 
Peace comes only when we stop looking to things, people, and outer conditions to bring us peace and happiness, but throw ourselves unconditionally upon our inner resources. We sing this song most Sundays after service, let peace begin with me. It has to start from there. Let me step it up another notch. Friends, in developing a consciousness of peace, the box stops here, right with each one of us as individuals and how we relate with our world of affairs. Our world is a manifestation of many small relationships as related by Alan Cohen. He notes that the fate of the world literally rests on our daily interactions with our partners, children, parents, roommates, friends, neighbors, co-workers, etc. How do we conduct these interactions is the evidence of our practice and indicates where our genius lies. Cohen reminds us also, peace in the physical world can be built upon the cornerstone of peace in each of our hearts. And as we heal our sense of interpersonal separation, peace on earth is sure to follow. So our intention must change to foster this consciousness of peace individually and then collectively. So therefore, he states, the most significant contribution you and I can make toward world peace is to be peaceful ourselves, to give peacefulness to those whose lives we touch daily, and to forgive ourselves for errors to the point at which we love ourselves no matter what we have done. It is said, if we find no sin in ourselves, we find no sin in the world. So here we are, with something to consider. Love, ourse love for ourselves, love for others, forgiving ourselves, forgiving each other, peace for ourselves, and peace for each other. What are the benefits of living from a consciousness of peace? A consciousness of peace is evidenced by life flowing in divine order into beautiful, radiant, and fulfilling expression in, through, and as us. Details of what that looks like, A, realization of the presence of God in us, as us, B, loving peaceful relations with all, increased integration with mind, body, and spirit, D, healthy body temple, increased energy levels, increased productivity, successful engagement with the external world, which is as a result of our increased intelligence and creativity, which is a result of the orderly thinking processes that we cultivate. So when one is at peace with oneself, then the rest will follow. Judge Stroud, in the book called The Creative Process of the Individual, explains how the above happens. When one is experiencing and realizing the presence of spirit at levels of consciousness, there is the evidence of the fulfillment of life through the individual. In other words, as Reverend Sona would say, more liberty. With life comes love, because spirit cannot do otherwise than tend to the fuller development of life in each individual. And the pure motive of giving greater enjoyment of life is love. Since life is guided by love, it is also light. There is wisdom and understanding which leads to boundless manifestations yet to be, infinite possibilities to experience more of life. With this comes power, because there is no opposing force to pure spirit, because God is all there is. There can be no action that denies life, love, and light. From that comes peace as no part of the whole can be antagonistic to itself. Next to that is beauty, which is, in other words, perfect action, that orderliness of things fitting into place. And that is called beauty, and that leads us into joy. So when one has an awareness established in a consciousness of peace, all the attributes of spirit must manifest as the individual experience, right? 
Let me say that simpler. When you put more of yourself into life, you find your any activity or the day to day, you make you understand that you are the vehicle through which life must unfold, must move upon itself. This is the creative process I'm talking about now. So the more you put yourself into life to be the vehicle, the channel through which the livingness of spirit is expressed, then love arises. Because the more you put life into something, that's where love flourishes. Because you love what you do. You love this, you love the interaction with your friends, your neighbors, and whatever. Once there is love, there is light, which means wisdom and understanding. You are able to tap in to wisdom, understanding of who you are in relationship to others. So peace, they, they, sorry, you have life, love, wisdom. Now you are empowered from that position. Right? Because you know that nothing is impossible. Because you are experiencing the fullness of life. Love attends you. Right? You are tapping into wisdom and understanding. You are empowered. And with empowerment comes peace of mind. With that still calm peace of mind, you are now streaming from the unbounded. Therefore, infinite possibilities of being more or to express more of life now flows through you unimpeded from a still, quiet mind. From that, spontaneous right action attends you. Before they call, I will answer. So before the, the need arises for everything, everything fits into place in your life and affairs. That is what beauty is. When you stand afar, you're a beholder, and you just see everything in your life just fitting into place. Pop, pop, pop. That's beauty. And with that, a sense of joy, knowing that you are a part of this creative process. That's what Troy is trying to tell you. And this is what we teach. As long as you align yourself with the laws of life and allow spirit to express through you, then life, love, light, Power, peace, beauty, and joy must come through. So how we develop, how do we develop this consciousness? It starts with our relationship with ourselves. Once you conceive of this idea of peace as part of your being, we believe that it is natural for us to experience this and watch its demonstration in our lives. What is the approach that one can use to conceive of an idea? we teach a spiritual practice called visualization, right? We can now visualize, which means placing in our mind the four images, pictures, impressions, by using your sensory abilities, the five senses, right? Next, how do we evidence our belief? What is natural to feel? How are you going to feel? How are you going to experience your belief in peace? You have to feel it. So how does it feel to cohabitate with all creations in peace? You have to, once you're putting those images of a peaceful existence, you have to have a sense of quietness and tranquility. And then watch for the results because it gets embedded in the subconscious mind. And your very demeanor brings stability and calmness to your surroundings. Joel Goldsmith states this, when you have attained a consciousness of peace, you consciously have to bestow that peace to all who come within range of your consciousness. In other words, while walking on the street or driving a car, there must be the conscious realization that the peace you have found will envelop those who surround you, whether in the home or in the business place or on the highways. There is always peace. Ms. Hopkins noted, that when the storms come thickest, according to the seeming, the peace of your soul is nearest. In the heart of the cyclone is the intensest peace. The ship only needs to make one turn to be in the heart of the cyclone. We have only to look away from turmoil. Look unto me and the great storm will calm down. The sorrows will have nothing to exercise themselves upon. 
You have heard the Brahmins once taught that the flower of the soul springs soon after the storm. But the soul's flower will not bloom if it chooses to be in the storm." End of quote. So how do we let this flower of our soul within, each one of us, bloom into a fully developed consciousness of peace? There are three Bible scriptures that remind us how to look unto me, which means to keep our mind focused on the visualization process of placing the right idea or image on our conscious mind to be manifested as the law of our life. John 14 verse 27 goes like this. The words of Jesus are way sure. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid, end of quote. Jesus was indeed a master teacher. This verse is taken out of chapter 14, and it's a step-by-step -step approach to cultivating that peace I leave with you, my peace. From that same chapter, he tells us at verse 16 of guidance being offered by way of the comforter. When he says, I will pray the Father, he shall give you another comforter, which in other words is helper. Verse 26 tells us who the comforter is, our own soul. Because as we discover our true selves, our alliance with the Father, he goes on to, in verse 20 to tell you, at this day ye shall know that I am in the Father, ye in me, and I in you. End of quote. This Christ consciousness is the realization of the presence of God in each individual, and it will guide us, teach us, show us how to unfold and evolve into our true nature and allowing us to live at spirit's highest idea of what it means to enjoy an inner peace. Isaiah 26 verse 3 assists us as well. I quote, thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee, end of quote. When we keep our eyes single by visualizing this perfect peace within ourselves, in whatever image, picture, affirmation, song, poetry, whatever it takes to impress the subconscious mind, then it automatically outpictures as our experience of true peace. Third scripture is Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still and know I am God. The important words are still, know, and I am God. Be still to the seeming turmoils, exigencies, storms of life, and know what? We know that we, what we believe in. What is the evidence of our belief? How we feel? We feel that the incarnation of spirit in man, that same incarnation, is the same incarnation in all men. We are one. That's one. We believe in our own soul, our own spirit, and our own destiny, for we understand that the life of man is God. So we must develop a feeling, a sense of awareness that something greater than ourselves dwells in our consciousness. Out of that, we were incarnated. We are spiritual beings, and we have to stick to the thought and the idea. In fact, we can pronounce ourselves, as Miss Hopkins says, which I so love, I am a spiritual being with spiritual powers untrammeled, unhindered, unrestrained. You know what that means? Nothing can disturb you. Nothing can move you. I am a spiritual being with spiritual powers untrammeled, unhindered, and unrestrained. So as we develop this intimacy with our indwelling Lord, we can declare that we are centers of God consciousness. I am God. Be still and know, I am God. So let us begin our practice by outpicturing what it is like to cultivate this consciousness of peace. That is our genius. I broke it down by using the letters of peace. P, positioning ourselves. Every day, first waking thought is what positions us for the day's activities and our experiences thereof. This means our spiritual practices must assist us, whether it's mindful exercises to waking up the body, meditation, visioning, or visualizing. 
spirit's highest idea of our life experience for that day. Whatever we can bring to that day, we must affirm our position of peace. P. E is evaluate what did not serve us the previous day and set the intention to expand our consciousness into a better experience this new day. Our Science of Mind magazine of October has a quote from Dr. Holmes, and he tells us what he thinks about expansion. He says, don't withdraw from things, but enter into a greater consciousness of an expanded activity with everything. You should be so full of the essence and vitality of life, you would feel as if you'd explode if you didn't do something. That would not make you chaotic. Instead, be calm and peaceful. And that great sense of the activity of life, that one thing will heal you of most anything because it will just set things going and purify everything inside, end of quote. In other words, don't withdraw from life because of disappointments. Enter into a greater awareness of it. Find the activity that pleases and assists in stimulating that inner peace. That is where your passion and your genius lies. It will simply heal anything unlike the dissonance or the disturbances. It will heal and the givingness of life will always flow through. A, awareness. This goes also with acceptance and authenticity. As we affirm and deepen our awareness of the presence of God within, our sense and fellowship with that great spirit within, we can now accept that the attributes of God are, are our attributes as well, because we know the Father and I are one. So we can therefore experience an authentic life, our true nature, life of fulfillment, one of life, love, light, power, peace, beauty, and joy. C, we must remain centered, cultivate and culture this consciousness of peace. We think, speak, act, words of peace and harmony. Our surroundings, our inner and outer space must reflect that peace of being. We learn to see each other as our true selves, children of God, no matter the mistaken behavior pattern. Whatever irritates us, dissolve it with peace. Our state of mind in all things is paramount. Practice, 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 and move towards the expression of our true inner being. And don't forget to celebrate the small incremental steps of growth and unfoldment. So when something used to irritate you, you know, look at it so, you know, so disinterested. You just behold it and look down your nose at it. I say, yes, I get it. Celebrate, because it happens to us often. What used to trouble us last year, 10 years ago, no longer trouble us today. E is for empowerment. As we learn to embrace the essential aspects of our new life experiences of peace and harmony, we have the ability to transcend all that does not serve us and flower into the truth of our being. So P, position ourselves daily in peace. E, evaluate and expand into our true nature. A, be aware and be authentic. C, stay centered, cultivate new awareness and celebrate our for E, empowerment. So now let us do a little practice of visualization. Another word we call in a, it's a called centering. It's one of our spiritual practices that we teach here. So take every non-lab things, put them on the chair beside you. All right? And just gently just close your eyes. <coughs> practice time now. Just close your eyes. Bringing your attention to the rise and fall of your chest, the incoming and outgoing breath. Continue to breathe deeply and slowly until there is a feeling of calmness and quiet. Set the intention now to create a sanctuary within the heart space. 
where you can experience rest, safety, security. Use the imagination by thinking of an image, your favorite chair or room in the house, its color, or somewhere in the country, in the hills, allowing the breeze to flow through your, on your face, or overlooking the sea, getting caught up as the waves come into shore. Anything that gives you peace. If it's a flower, remember the smell. If it's fresh bread, smell it. And I love that sense of comfort and peace. To fill, to fill the heart space. Breathe deeper. Deepening your awareness, letting go of the sounds of the fan and the sounds of the traffic. Just breathe. Breathe now into that heart space, that sanctuary within where pure spirit dwells at our center. Pure spirit dwells. Stay with that sense of peace, calmness, and tranquility. Now gently, becoming mindful now of the sounds within you, the fan, the sounds of the birds outside, taking your time, just gently opening your eyes, feeling your chair your feet on the ground, bringing your awareness back to this room. This is a spiritual practice called centering. You can do that anytime, anywhere, any place. It's non-threatening. It's just staying inside. As Reverend John said last week, staying inside for a while. And always remember, my friends, our power lies within. And from the expanded awareness of our consciousness of peace, we can create a world of love, beauty, and joy, and find peace in every moment. I end with the words of our founding minister. Close your eyes. Find your point of peace and stay there. Victory, my friends. Namaste.